Tonight, what is Uber's God view and is it being misused? The FTC shuts down fake software support companies and when Beats Music will be part of iOS. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 219 for Wednesday, November 19th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Now introducing Squarespace 7 with even better site management tools and other improvements. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TECHNIGHT. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Today, the Federal Trade Commission and the state of Florida announced that they've obtained a court order to temporarily shut down and freeze the assets of two telemarketing operations they accuse of deceptively selling more than $120 million in technical support software and services. Operating under names like Boost Software, Advanced Tech Support Co., OMG Tech Help, Vast Tech Support, and PC Vitalware, the company's software tricked consumers with warnings that their computers had bugs or errors that needed to be fixed, say officials from both agencies. One program called PC Cleaner Pro scanned a target's computer to see whether it had the ability to block 926 specific pieces of malware, some of which the FTC says date back to at least 2004 and have not been active threats in many years. Years. After paying $30 for the program, consumers then had to call a toll-free number to activate the software and then were encouraged to sign up for more services. From 2011 to 2013, the FTC says consumers downloaded PC Cleaner Pro more than 450,000 times. And that's just one of the programs. Beats Music streaming service has a future, and that future is being bundled directly into iOS. As early as March, the Financial Times reports. They're citing anonymous sources. It's not really a big surprise, though. Bundling Beats directly into iOS would immediately make it available on hundreds of millions of iPhones and iPads, which is a pretty nice catch-up tactic if they want to dip into the streaming market currently led by Spotify. Beats reportedly will remain a paid service, but likely rebranded under the iTunes name. In other Apple news, the company says it's committed to bringing jobs in manufacturing to the Mesa, Arizona area after supplier GT Advanced Technologies, they were going to make sapphire screens for the iPhones in the city, filed for bankruptcy. GT Advanced shut down operations last month in a factory that employed more than 700 people. The factory's developer, DMB Associates, still has long-term plans for the patch of land. They say it includes 20 million square feet of non-residential space and up to 15,000 houses in a new development. Bankruptcy filings by GT Advanced that were unsealed on November 7th claim that the terms of its deal with Apple are, quote, onerous and massively one-sided. GT Advanced shares have fallen more than 90% since the bankruptcy filing. Yesterday, we told you a little about Uber's PR nightmare. I guess that's all I can really call it. That's been unfolding this week due to a comment from a company senior executive that Uber could start investigating journalists that were critical of the company. Joining us to talk about how this is shaking out is Roberto Baldwin, reporter at The Next Web. Hey, Roberto. Hi, how's it going? It's going well. You know, I know that you were up as I was on, I think it was Sunday night when this all started to kind of uh, cascade on Twitter and people were, were you know, offering opinions right and left. So we've got senior VP Emil Michael suggesting digging up dirt on a particular journalist. Then we had CEO Travis Kalanick apologizing in what's known as a tweet storm, meaning tweets that are, I don't know, three or more in succession that are numbered. Okay. So they, they have a blog, I don't <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Twitter is so effective and everybody hates a tweet storm. So you get, you know, all of this hate reading, right? <laughs> uh, you actually wrote about this topic though, in your article, why corporate investigations into journalists are wrong. I think on the surface, someone would say, well, yeah, that's, that's probably wrong. Right. Why is this such a controversial issue? You think? Well, it, the idea is that these, you know, some of these companies feel like uh, journalists are picking on them or they're being overcritical. Um, and, and so because of that, they should be allowed to turn around and, and investigate uh, the journalists. Well, there's already someone who investigates journalists and that's j other journalists. Uh, you know, we've, you know, we... <laughs> yeah, we all hate we, each other. Yeah, we all hate each other. I mean, we hang out, but we all <laughs> yeah. hate each We're other. We're investigating each other, that's for sure. Yeah, you know, if, if you see, even if it's a friend, if you see someone write something that you find, you know, that's, that's maybe a little shilly or it just, you know, that there, there are factual errors in it, 
you're going to call them out, you know, probably in private, but, you know, possibly in public. Right. Um, and then if, if corporations get into the, uh, the act of, of investigating journalists, they're not going to use that information on a blog. They're going to start using that information to sideline those journalists, to silence them, to keep them from talking about, you know, something that that corporation might be doing wrong. And instead of using that money to investigate journalists, how about you just fix the problem? How about that seems like a... <laughs> Now, obviously, there's there's the side of the story that says, listen, this was off the record. This was somebody possibly not even being serious. Obviously, the comments were bad. But, mm -hmm. you know, how, how true is this actually? Now, the story gets a little bit more complicated. Last night, uh, something called the Uber God view has actually been something that's that's been talked about in the past. This is the idea that, uh, you know, somebody with, with the right credentials at Uber could follow uh, a ride and be able to track it to a particular person, correct? Yeah, and, and they've already actually used it. They used it uh, talking to a reporter. They've used it to to show a VC's traveling during a party without this person's, you know, without their uh, permission, without their knowledge. To, to be a party favor uh, that violates your privacy is 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 creepy. You know this. You know this is a company that you know you get in a cab. You trust that you know the cab is going to take you from point A to point B, and you're not going to be you know your your trip is not going to be broadcast in front of you know tens to you know however many people are at this party, just because they can. So okay, let's let's think about the the way that something like the god view which is unfortunately named but something like that would work you know if uber is scaling you know massive scaling in lots of cities around the world one would think a bird's eye view of how the you know the the ubers are spread out across some sort of a metropolitan area would be something of course the company would have now if you've got that data then you're obviously going to be able to say okay well what what you know who is this uber you 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 connect that to an uber account and then you know who the writer is because mm -hmm. all of that data is connected. So when you think of it on that scale, is it just a matter of you know, should only certain people have access to this kind of information? Because clearly the tools exist. Uh, the, having the tool isn't, you know, you should have that tool if you're running a, a large company that's scaling because you need to be able to keep track of what's going on. But giving access to anyone who's at the corporate level is that's, that's a huge violation of a lot of people's privacy. Um, you know, if I have... You know, if you have an Uber employee who is maybe is going through a divorce, he or she might be tracking their spouse mm -hmm. because they can. I mean, it happened at the NSA. It's, you know, and so it's, you know, it's human nature to kind of, well, what is this person doing? What is going on? Um, so you really need to sort of curtail that sort of widespread access to, to a tool like this. Well, how do we know how that is being curtailed? I think that that's the, that's the issue that so many of us have with us is, okay, these tools exist. Uh, they should not be abused. We have no way of knowing if they're being abused, you know, if, 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 if little trickles of information aren't getting out. So yeah, how do we fix the problem of companies like this that are, you know, largely completely unregulated, having mm -hmm. this kind of access and not doing the wrong thing with it? Well, I mean, the first thing you do is what we're doing now is it's kind of holding the, you know, their feet to the fire, telling them, you know, this isn't cool. If you want our money, and that's what they want. They want your money. They want your business. Then you have to start acting, you know, like adults. I mean, adults don't track random people for the, just because they can for their own, you know, for their own sort of uh, individual benefit. You do it for, you know, what the company is doing. You need that data for, you know, if you need, a, you have issues, you have problems with the driver, you have maybe an issue that comes up during a, during a ride. But for the most part, you know, a lot of these startups, they don't think about privacy. They don't think about security other than, you know, a second or third or even fourth thing that comes into their mind when they're building these, these companies. And, you know, as they get bigger, th these are issues that really need to take, you know, they need to come into the foreground. And it's, it's, it's up to us as consumers and as reporters especially to, to, to report and say, you know, this isn't cool. This is what you're doing is wrong. And if Uber is upset that reporters are pointing out, you know, all these issues, then A, Uber should just fix them. Well, the company published its privacy policy and hadn't done that before for the first time last night. But there have been, you know, many calls for the resignation of of Emil Michael, uh, who was obviously the VP who who made some unfortunate comments at dinner. Also, I've seen, you know, some calls for resignations from uh, from from Travis Kalanick, who's the CEO, or or large investors who should you know, pull money out of the company. Mm -hmm. I, 
We are in the journalism business, so I know that there is something that, you know, it, it strikes a chord with, with, with certain people, not just that follow tech, but, but actually work in our specific capacity. Do you think the general public at large, many of whom love Uber and find it to be very convenient as opposed to the taxi options that, you know, were formerly in their uh, cities, care enough to make an impact? That, and then that's, you know, I think it's the initial report uh, about, you know, uh, tracking reporters or, or digging up in, information on reporters. I think that was a very, you know, journalists really care about that. People in the tech industry really care about that. But resonating with the general public, probably not so much. But it, it just, they just came, things just keep seems to keep stacking on and piling on. I mean, they, and now Senator Al Franken has just uh, sent a letter to to the CEO asking, you know, what are you doing? And, you know, when you have when you have the government coming in and saying, hey, what are you doing? And it starts hitting, you know, Good Morning America and, you know, the morning shows, that's when the average consumer starts, you know, kind of waking up. But to be honest, is it is this going to decimate Uber? I doubt it. I think, the, I think you know, 90% of the people who use Uber, even if this just is a horrible, horrible mistake and, a hor and you know, it, it, it comes out that, all these bad things are happening and people are upset. 90% of people will probably still use it unless, you know, we find out something incredibly, incredibly distasteful. It sounds kind not unlike some of my cable company options, of which I have one. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, do you want to walk or do you want to get there on time? Yeah, well, it, it's like the, Sno <laughs> the, the Snowden revelations. I mean, you know, the, the NSA, you know, the government's spying on you. And a lot of people, a lot of my friends who are journalists, um, on Facebook, we're like, well, I'm not doing anything wrong. Good enough. Whatever. It's fine. I'm like, no, that's not, that's, <laughs> that's not the correct response. It's not. They're violating your civil rights. They're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if the uh, PR nightmare gets any worse, and I'll have you back later in the week. Roberto Baldwin is a reporter over at The Next Web. Thanks for joining us, and remind folks where they can keep up with you. Uh, you can check out thenextweb.com or I am on Twitter and my name's down there somewhere in my lower third. It is. Strange ways, no vowels. Thanks, Roberto. Thank you. Coming up, Nielsen ratings are coming to streaming video and the internet takes on Barbie's I Can Be a Computer Engineer picture book as you knew they would. But first, let's take a moment to thank squarespace.com. It's the all-in-one platform that makes it easy and fun to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Do you have a professional website or online portfolio right now? Mm, probably could use a little bit refreshing, right? I've been using Squarespace for really a, gosh, when was my first Squarespace site? 2007? Squarespace 7, they've come a long way since then. Makes getting started easier than ever. You can now live edit on one screen. That means you're not toggling between your site manager and your preview mode. That was something that you know, might have been a little cumbersome in the past. No more. You can even preview all of your designs in device mode. That means you can see what your website will look like on the web versus on a tablet or you know a mobile phone. There's lots of different sizes now. You now have instant access to professional stock photography as well from Getty Images. $10 each. And all of a sudden, you've got all these images that you can just pull right in to your site easily. Squarespace has also designed category-specific templates. And that's for different industries. You know, you, a musician might want a different website than an architect. And, and, and somebody in the food industry might need something that looks different than a photographer. A Horizon template is all for bands. This is a really, really nice one. Features tour dates and a music player and a merchandise store. Speaking of selling, e-commerce is something a lot of people are interested in available for all subscription plan levels at Squarespace. That includes the ability to accept donations. So if you're, you know, you're trying to sell something, you're trying to get some money, maybe a school fund drive or something like that, you've got all of that built into Squarespace, which starts at just $8 per month. That includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year and also hosting as well. It's a really great all-in-one service. It's mobile ready. The Squarespace portfolio, Note, Metric, and Blog mobile apps are all easy ways to keep your website up to date when you're on the go. Hosting is included. Squarespace takes care of the hosting so you don't have to. I hope you have a really popular blog. You never have to worry about it going down, though. Start a free two-week trial right now. No credit card required. Just start building your website. Take a couple weeks and put together something really nice. Takes very little effort on your part. I should know. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT and get 10% off. 
Begin using Squarespace 7. If you're an existing customer, you just go to the Settings tab and activate all those new features. So if you're already using Squarespace, you kind of get a little gift, Squarespace 7. Thanks to Squarespace for the support of Tech News Tonight. A better web awaits, and it starts with your new Squarespace website. On to a few more stories that we're following today. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it. Amazon's Chromecast competitor, the Fire TV Stick, is now shipping to customers on a first-come, first-served basis. That's based on pre-orders. Uh, a lot of them, actually. Amazon offered its Prime subscribers that dongle for an introductory price of just $19. And the company says it was the fastest-selling Amazon device ever. Going forward, the device will retail for $39. Still pretty reasonable. The Fire TV Stick plugs into a TV's HDMI port for access to popular streaming sources like Netflix and Prime Instant Video, Hulu Plus, Showtime Anywhere, that kind of stuff. The Fire TV Stick also allows playback content from an iOS or an Android device, and users can mirror Fire OS and Android devices to the large screen of the TV. Again, much like Chromecast but from Amazon. Next month, Nielsen will start measuring viewership of TV on subscription online video services like Netflix for the first time, according to Nielsen client documents reviewed by the Wall Street Journal. The new approach can analyze the audio components of a program to identify which shows are being streamed, though for now, subscription video viewing on mobile devices is not included. According to the Nielsen documents, television viewing is down 7% for the month ended October 27th. That's from a year earlier. Among adults, 18 to 49 and that's a demo that advertisers pay a premium to reach they're tough they're tough those 18 to 49 year olds meanwhile streaming video subscriptions have risen to 40 percent of households in september that's up from 34 percent just in january and netflix accounts for the vast majority of that viewership name recognition everybody the new measurement service will cover netflix and amazon although neither company is actively participating it's kind of interesting netflix has said in the past it doesn't need to release its viewership data since it doesn't sell advertising so nielsen will for them well, let's color us all a bit unsurprised at this latest piece of news. The U.S. Senate has failed to get the 60 votes needed to advance the USA Freedom Act, which would have stopped the National Security Agency from collecting the phone records of millions of Americans who aren't suspected of any crime. Senators voted 58 to 42 in favor of the motion, not quite enough, to allow the USA Freedom Act to come to an up or down vote in the Senate. The bill is now effectively at least for the year. But the NSA program will most likely be debated again next year as Congress decides whether or not to review, renew rather sections of the Patriot Act anti-terrorism law that are set to expire in June. Major tech companies pushed for the Freedom Act's approval. They argued, of course, that the NSA's actions made it hard for them to convince foreign customers that they won't be spied on by the U.S. government if they use U.S. phone or internet providers. Finally, you've undoubtedly heard about the I Can Be a Computer Engineer Barbie fiasco by now. In fact, if you're watching live on, on This Week in Google, they just talked about it right before the show. It detailed a computer engineer Barbie to not really know anything about coding and having to enlist the help of some male friends. Way to go, Mattel. Well, in true form, the internet fixes have started pouring in. One website called Feminist Hacker Barbie even allows the public to fix a page in Barbie's book, which includes such gems as turning, I'm only creating the designs. I'll need Stephen and Brian's help to turn it into a real game, into a speech on the importance of computer security. I've noticed, and this is also not very surprising, that Barbie seems to prefer Linux in many of those rewritten pages. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Thanks for being with us. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 and watch or listen on demand. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv with feedback. And of course, you can watch live every day at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today. That's tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. See you there. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.